great, Brian. Well, let's just jump right into it. How did you fall in love with the game of baseball? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure just like many of the, the baseball people out there, I mean, I started playing at a young age. My dad was out coaching me. Um, so, you know, definitely started to, you know, enjoy playing, I think, the game of baseball. Um, but, you know, I would honestly say that I, I'm not really sure if I was truly in love with it when I was growing up. I think it, it probably wasn't until around my sophomore year of college when I ended up, um, you know, obviously uh, got recruited and got to play for what is now a Hall of Fame coach and Sam Riggleman. Um, and I, I really started to kind of see more of the nuances in the game of baseball, um, kind of from a different perspective, I think. And so got to really um, watch him, you know, build relationships with players on and off the field. I got to just understand the strategy. Um, I got really just a little bit more in depth into the entire framework of baseball. And I think that's truly when I started like realizing like, I, I love this game and I love being a part of it. And I think that's when I realized that that's what I wanted to do kind of outside of college and, and, and for kind of my future. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much when I think it all happened. Awesome. Well, why don't you, um, how, how about your, you know, you, you talked about college getting to play for a hall of fame coach. Can you dive in a little bit more into, you know, your past into the game and kind of yeah. what brought you to where you are current owner of Kane's great lakes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I ended up going to Bethel College, um, which was an NEI school in Mishawaka. Um, got to play there with an All-American pitcher. Um, and, you know, outside of when I graduated, um, unfortunately, didn't have a whole lot of opportunities baseball wise. So um, decided, well, I think I'm going to give back. And I got into coaching. Um, and so ended up going and coaching my uh, my first year with my alma mater and um, had a great opportunity to go there and just kind of start my coaching career and building some relationships and had, uh, had a couple of players get drafted um, as I was working with them and um, was only able to do that one year because right away I got an opportunity where I thought I wanted to kind of expand into the high school realm and be kind of my own coach, my own head coach. Um, and so ended up going into head coaching at the high school level for about four years before reverting back to the college level where I got a head coaching college job. Um, so I got to go over to Holy Cross College, which is right outside the University of Notre Dame, and, and kind of um, start their program, which was in the NAIA, um, and did that for five years before the financial kind of crisis hit us, and uh, they, they realized that uh, they weren't going to be able to continue to fund the program. And so um, Indiana University South Bend um, was in the process of starting a program, um, which was an affiliate of IU. And uh, yeah, so I got called by their athletic director and got an opportunity to kind of start the baseball program, take some of my guys from Holy Cross over to there and uh, did that for um, a couple of years before realizing I wanted to kind of spend some time with my, my son who was kind of coming up and, and getting into the, into the game a little bit more and uh, decided to go back into the high school realm and uh, take a little pressure off me from being a head coach and just being an assistant where I could just kind of show up and coach and not have to worry about all the logistical stuff and um, got that opportunity to kind of spend more time with my son and, and going through that realm. So that's awesome. Well, what are um, what are some of the biggest differences then uh, between coaching at the college level and and coaching you know at the high school slash youth level that you see? Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously the college level. I mean, especially at the NAI level, um, you know, pretty much it was a one man show, right? I mean, you were doing everything. Um, you were you were out recruiting. You were out making all the phone calls. Um, you know, especially at the NAI level, you know, I was at the smaller level. Um, so really, a lot of the responsibility fell on myself. Um, whereas, you know, at the high school level, um, I don't necessarily, you know, I think the, the teaching and the development was a little bit more in depth there. Um, you know, you're really taking a kid that sometimes in some regards walks in as a freshman and, and may have never played the game before. Um, but maybe have some athleticism and you're like, wow, you know, I think I can turn this kid into something in four years if he's committed to it. And so I think you get a little bit more uh, of kind of that personal relationship with some of that opportunity when you're really taking a kid and developing them. And then at the college level, you know, you, you were really trying to recruit kids that could come in and play right away, get on the field. And although you would be developing them along the way, you were really kind of getting them prepared more for what was going to be after college, right? So um, kind of being a, a good husband, a, a good father, and so on and so forth. So um, both levels are awesome. I loved all of it. Um, but definitely, you know, I would say I love the high school level for sure, because of just that one-on-one -on -one attention I get with all my guys to develop them. 
Yeah, it's a really good point. I think a lot of parents and families, you know, as they go through the recruiting process and are looking at colleges, I think some of the biggest feedback I've gotten, Brian, is that, you know, a lot of the best learning opportunities were when they were young, right? When you get to college, you know, college coaches, whether it's at the NIA level, junior college, division three, two, all the way up to the top of the game, division one, SEC, ACC, Pac-12, they get paid to win, right? And they're going to come up there and, and, and their job is to win, win baseball games. And that's not to say that uh, they don't develop. There's a lot of great development that goes out there, but it, it does kind of put a, a light on the, the importance of your development as a player and your skill set in your younger years, right? In your 12, 13, 14, all the way, right? And making sure that you're preparing yourself as well as you can to be able to compete um, at that level. So let's let's talk about transition a little bit then into your program now, um, Canes Midwest, and tell me how it started, where you how you guys yeah. got to where you are today. Yeah, so we uh, kind of uh, you know started in 2015, or I'm sorry, 2005. We were uh, we were actually the Michigan Scrappers, okay. um, and, and that that was kind of where we started. We um, it, it was um, you know really. We had a group of freshmen that came into a high school program that that was looking for a little bit more. Um, and so, you know, at that time, summer baseball was kind of dying down at the high school levels as far as kids starting to compete, you know, and do the stuff that I used to do when I grew up, which was playing like 30, 40 high school baseball games with my high school team. Um, so, you know, just in conversation, decided, hey, you know, let's let's give this a shot. Travel ball was really starting to kick off around that time. And uh, so we put a team together of like 15 and 16 year old kids and kind of threw them out into the wolves and just said, Hey, let's go play some baseball and started traveling to Ohio and stuff like that. And just got our butts kicked. Um, you know, just didn't realize, you know, what we were really getting ourselves into, but, um, you know, that following year, we ended up going from one high school team to three, um, three years later, we, we advanced into the youth level, um, and got from like 12 year 12 years on, on up. And then uh, by year four, we were really down into the eight row level and, and really starting to see kind of that transition starting to grow as, as travel ball was kind of um, evolving, I guess I would say. Um, and so that led us for about 15 years or so um, with the with the Scrappers organization. And then, um, you know, Jay Hunley and I started talking, um, who I knew Jay just from coaching at the college level. And, um, you know, Jay uh, and I started talking about maybe what that next step might look like for us as we were starting to look at kind of like, had we reached our plateau of where we thought we could take our kids to. And um, yeah, we, we kind of came up with that regional idea of within the Canes Great Lakes, being an affiliate within the Canes organization and what they could offer us. And, um, you know, obviously from a brand loyalty standpoint, I mean, we put a lot into, I put a lot into the, the Scrapper's name and, you know, just our brand. And we had a lot of kids going to college, but when you saw what the Canes were doing from a national standpoint and a regional standpoint, um, it just gave our family so much more than what we could really offer them. And uh, so in 2022, um, we decided, yeah, you know what, let's do this and let's rebrand and let's join forces and see if we can make something, you know, even greater than what we already have and use those resources to really advance the, the level of competition that we're providing to our kids as well as what we're trying to put on the field um, and give them extra opportunities outside of, outside of you know, the Canes organization into college. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, a microcosm, obviously the Canes are doing a great job. I think one thing that I've been really excited to see is, you know, doing the different interviews like this with uh, even just the Canes Midwest guys. And what a great group of people that Jay's been able to assemble, really. Um, and then you kind of take that on the national level, you know, even blow it up bigger what the Diamond Allegiance is trying to do and bring together people like you, Brian, that really care about the future of the game and care about these kids and families. So when you look at your program, um, now obviously Canes Great Lakes, like what would be one word that you would use um, to, to encapsulate your program? And then I think most importantly for me is how do you try to bear that out and, and show that as a leader on a daily basis? Yeah, you know, I think, it, I, I think it's interesting. I think we, we had this conversation as we were making the transition of, you know, something that we thought we could kind of put our finger on on an everyday basis. Um, and so, you know, we, we kind of use it more as an acronym a little bit, but it's, uh, it's GRIT. Um, and, and each letter stands for something a little bit different for us from, a, from an organizational standpoint. And so, you know, G stands for the grind. 
right? What is it going to take each and every day? What's it going to take for us as coaches, as, as, you know, instructors, what's it going to take for our players? That grind is, is real, right? It's not easy. Um, this is not an easy sport by any means. Um, so, so that's the first R is relationship. You know, how do we really grow, um, you know, in, in, in basically working with and, and, and teaching and developing these kids on an everyday basis, but also, you know, how do we really grow these relationships with our families, right? I mean, I think the culture makes such a big impact on everything that we do. And then when you look at the I, um, integrity, um, it, it, I believe firmly that everything we do revolves around integrity. So, um, you know, I think we have to be trustworthy. I think parents have to trust us. Players have to trust us. I think in, in, the, in the game, I think we have to be respected in some regards, right? So, and, and you gain respect by, by having that trustworthiness. And then, um, you know, the T stands for uh, transparency. Um, I really believe that the more transparent you are, the better it is, especially in, again, the evolution of where travel ball is at costs are going up. Things are just, you know, crazy. Um, I believe our players, our families should all know everything that's, that's going on and, and how we can really, you know, bring that full circle for them. It, it makes all the difference in the world. So, so grit is our word for sure. Best answer so far. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. And I, and I love the, the two things that stand out to me is, you know, is relationships first of all. Right. And, and, you know, one, Thing that said a lot but I really believe it is you know players families you know they don't care what you know until they know that you care right mm -hmm. and being able to establish that relationship um, is so so important and it's so refreshing to hear that um, from people that are out there with kids with families on a daily basis that those relationships are important and then like you said transparency and and talking about where your you, where your true calling is right obviously all of us right you played NAIA baseball. You know, I had the opportunity to play Division One baseball and then Division Two baseball. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to coach big leaguers and SEC players of the year. But you know, we all have to understand that a majority of the kids, right, ninety-five percent of travel baseball players are going to a level other than Division One. And and what are we, what are we doing as a as a as a as a you know, it's a company for you, but also you know, as an industry to really make sure that we're not losing sight of those type of kids, right? And not to say there's nothing wrong, there's nothing, there is a place for the best of the best. They need to play each other and, and be elevated on that national level, like the Canes national team, right? But yep. there's a lot of other kids that need help, that need true, you know, true, true transparency and help to get to the next level. So it's amazing, obviously, to hear you say that. Um, well, with all those things that you guys are doing, with all the growth that you've had, obviously you're not the. It's not a one man show, right? And it's uh, <laughs> impossible to be able to pull that off with with one person. So, you know, I know there's probably a lot of people, but you know, who are some people that really, really help drive what you guys do on a daily basis? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I would say, you know, obviously for me, you know, I'm 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 president and director of baseball operations. I mean, yes, I I, I do kind of oversee the vast majority of everything from tryouts and, you know, engaging our teams, picking our teams, helping our coaches make the right decisions. But, um, couple, you know, four or five years ago, we added a, we added an assistant director, Zachary Foster moved here from California, played college baseball, both at the junior college level, as well as the, as the NAI level. Zach is really influential in us because he, he's kind of our strength guy. He's our assistant director. Um, and he's kind of our really development coordinator, right? He's the guy that we're really kind of building through to kind of make sure we're putting the right plans in place um, so that he's able to kind of implement that um, in a full scope, both to our youth level players um, as, as well as our high school level players. Um, and he does a fantastic job. And we're just so thankful to have Zach around. Um, you know, he's young, he's ambitious, he, he's he's really kind of eager in the game, right? So he's kind of in that in that uh, era of really wanting to do anything and everything. So he's awesome. Um, David Gardner is our pitching guy. Um, David um, played at Michigan State, um, got drafted by the Chicago Cubs, played all the way up to AAA, out of baseball now. But he really kind of is our, our guru within that pitching um, side of things, developmental side of things, just making sure our pitchers are doing what they're supposed to do. We follow really, really, really strict guidelines with our guys. Um, last thing I ever want to do is have one of my players, one of my parents come to me and say, Hey, you caused this, um, this injury happened because of, of this organization or because of you guys. Um, so our coaches are pretty, pretty, um, 
put on strict reins, I guess I would say. Um, and then, you know, we, we, we have several other people that are behind the scenes. Like we have a really strong advisory panel that we, we kind of, you know, shoot ideas off of. A lot of them are just past parents um, that have had kids that have played in the organization that I really, truly respect that maybe don't necessarily want to be in the limelight of anything, um, but they're willing to kind of listen and, and give ideas and be completely candid if, if that makes absolute no sense whatsoever of what I'm thinking or um, yeah, absolutely. That makes perfect sense. Um, and so, you know, there's about five to six of those individuals that I, I constantly shoot information off of, um, as well as our board of directors that we have that, that obviously kind of, okay, now we've done all this. Now can we get it approved and can we move this forward, right, to, to make sure that this is, we're doing this in the right manner. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of people, but, you know, the three forefront people are me, Zachary, and David. Great. Love it. Um, so I'm a parent and I'm searching around in, in your area for a travel ball team and, and, and I stumble across you guys. Um, what do I get um, by being a part of your organization, right? Do, do, I, do I practice? Do I just show up and play games? You know, is showcasing more the mentality? Like, like, what do I get if I come and play for you? Yeah, I think, you know what, in today's world, I think it's, I think it's probably the most important question a family should ask. Right. So, you know, obviously, number one, um, you know, we the Canes brand. Right. So we're providing that one of the reasons why we made that transition was the Canes brand. Right. So um, and we can go in way depth in, in regards to that conversation. But I think when you start looking at it from an in out position of what is really the Canes Great Lakes going to offer me as a player um, from day one to the last day, we've got three indoor facilities. Um, that we utilize. We, we acquired two other organizations last year when we became the Canes, um, acquired their organization completely, which included their indoor facility. So now my players have three indoor facilities that they can utilize um, on an every night basis. Mo uh, one of them is 24-7 membership. So they have free reign to be able to come in and out of our facility at any given time and lift weights, run on the treadmill, do arm care, hit in cages, whatever. Um, we offer an eight-week developmental program um, for our youth um, group, as well as in our high school um, during the fall season. Um, so again, they're going to get, you know, a good program of built fundamentals um, as we roll into our winter months, usually between October, um, starting around the middle of October, we're going to run about a 10 to 12-week um, developmental program, more, more geared towards um, basically arm care, arm development, understanding what all that means. And then really how to utilize that in, in your daily routine and then um, a hitting, you know, kind of really going back from ground one all the way up. Um, and we're going to do that in, in, in a two day period um, throughout those 10 to 12 weeks. And then our high school guys um, really, which I think is, is where you, the rubber starts to meet the road. Um, you know, as we start putting together a true high school kind of formatted program, so strength training, even though we know that there's a lot of high school programs that are out there starting to do that more and more now, um, we're really putting them in a, in a functional program. So we're showing them exactly kind of a dietary program that they should be taking part in. We're showing them exactly how they should be doing certain things from a weightlifting standpoint. Obviously, now with the Diamond Allegiance program, we're going to be rolling into the curve um, application, which is going to give us some excitement there to really be able to enhance that um, program that we're already doing. Um, and then, you know, something we're, you know, we're in the process of doing is obviously um, this year, um, we'll be rolling out now um, some of our extended stuff, which is scholarship programs and things of that nature that we're offering to some of our guys that have been with us for, you know, at least a minimum of four to five years, um, and really just showing the true value and return on investment that you get uh, for being, you know, a part of the Canes Great Lakes. So um, you take all of that and then say, now we're going to go play the best and we're going to compete in the right tournaments. We're going to find the right events. We're not just playing in something that has four or five teams. We're playing and looking to kind of raise our bar. We want you to understand truly what it means to, to have to get better. And why do we have to get better? Why do I have to train this way? Why do I have to put this time and energy in? Um, and it's really just because of that level of competition we want to do. We're not going to travel all over the world. Um, that's just not something we're going to do. Um, but we're really going to be a Midwestern um, group. And, um, you know, our top teams at the high school level will definitely use the, the you know, the, the Georgias and the, the perfect games and, and those types of things. Um, and, and that from that elite level is really getting us there. But the rest of it is, you know, we're still looking to seek out the best competition. Absolutely. Love it. Really good answer. Um, and I would I would uh, I think it's really important um, in this 
crazy travel ball world to find an organization that is holistic, right? That is going to be able to, um, you know, help you uh, develop your skills so that when you get into the game, you actually have some skills to showcase, right? Yep. Um, so really, really important. So you've been doing this travel ball stuff since 2005. So you've seen the landscape, you know, shift and go all over the place, right? Um, if you could go back and tell yourself, you know, what would that be 18 years ago now? Um, something that you've learned over the last 18 years, um, what, what would it be? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think honestly, I think it's probably just kind of slow down and actually enjoy the actual moments. Um, you know, there, there are just so many things that happen in a year to year basis, even, a, you know, I mean, obviously a day to day basis, but, you know, year to year when you sit back and I think, you know, er, early on, you know, I can remember we would we would host our tryouts in late August, right? And so you, your season ended in July, you, you held your tryouts in August, you got a little bit of an opportunity to kind of really reflect and, and, and look back and say, you know, wow, that was that was kind of cool, right? We had a great year, we had some great teams, we had some great players. Man, we had some historic moments. Um, I just don't think you, we get that too much anymore um, because now we got, you know, you're trying out and, you know, seasons are going on, teams are playing and you're running tryouts on the Monday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays of an actual, of an actual season still um, in the month of July. Um, and, it, and it's just, you know, moving up so much faster. So I, I just don't think that there's the opportunity to sometimes sit back and reflect and really enjoy you know, some of the opportunities, some of the moments, some of the players, um, some of the accolades that, you know, our teams have achieved. And, and, and that would probably be the one area where I think as I've grown and, and every year now, I'm really trying to take, you know, that deep breath and really try to enjoy our players, um, the successes that they're having, the guys that are signing at the college level. Um, whereas before, I don't think we really got an opportunity to do that. Yeah, I love it. Just, you know, take take a second and, you know, <laughs> enjoy what's around you and be thankful for, for the guys and the people that have been put in your life. You know, yep. I think that's great. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, obviously just transitioning in 2022 to, to the Canes Great Lakes, um, you know, where do you, where do you see yourself in five years? What, what, what would be, you know, two or three goals for the Canes Great Lakes in the next five years? Yeah, I mean, I, I think sustainability, right? I mean, as far as what we're looking to do, obviously, you know, again, acquiring two new organizations this year, bringing those families into our our kind of um, our our kind of current family. Um, I think over the next couple of years, I think we, we've got a couple of things on the horizon. Um, you know, a new indoor facility, a larger indoor facility. I think that's on the horizon, uh, which will be a, a tremendous boost um, from one of our facilities that we have to go into a you know, 350,000 square foot facility with, you know, 12 cages and two fields. I mean, that, 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 that I think is going to be awesome. Right right? There. That's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. Um, and, and, you know, I mean, I think, obviously, I think we still have some growth that we, we can do. Um, we can really maintain that um, of what we're doing currently. We've got, you know, 22 teams today. I mean, I, I think our perfect world is to be somewhere in the ballparks of 25 to 26 teams. So we've got a little bit of growth opportunity. Um, I think on top of that, I think it's really taking, um, you know, our, our 14, 15 and on up age groups and, and really challenging them maybe just a touch more and really pushing the envelope with them a touch more just because of where the game of baseball is, 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 is at and where it's going. And, you know, with, with obviously everything on the division one side and the transfer portal stuff, right. I mean, the commitment for us to, to take those elite teams, those, those are, in our word, the gold level teams and, and really raise that bar of what we expect out of those kids um, is going to push the envelope a little bit on, on some, right? Do they really want to commit that much? And I think that's what we have to do um, just to try to keep up with some of that um, from, a, from a Midwestern level. I mean, just again, playing and where we're playing at. Um, you know, to make sure that we're getting the right kids year over year um, at that level, but then also still offering our secondary and, and third teams still great opportunities, still great showcase ability. But I think that that goal is where we, you know, in the next five years, hopefully we'll have that pretty well figured out and we should be able to hopefully maintain that from for years to come. Great. Um, so if you could, uh, this is one of my one of my favorite questions um, and I'll kind of Put, it, put them together. Um, first of all, you know, what is 
what excites you about the travel ball system today, right? Like you've been in it for 15 years. You're obviously energized. You've got, you know, this new brand you're wearing. So what excites you and essentially boils down to what is your why? Why do you get up and do this every day and put so much time into it? And then on the flip side of that, right? If there's one thing that you could change, right? If you were the commissioner of the travel baseball world, right? And you could just wave your magic wand and change one thing, what would that be? So again, What's your why? What gets you excited about where we currently are? And if you could change one thing, what would that be? Yeah, I mean, I think I think our why is pretty simple. I mean, I think the why is, you know, the relationships that we get every single day to be a part of these players and these families and lives, um, get to see the smiles on their faces, get to see them have fun, um, give back each and every day, right? I mean, I think, you know, sometimes we take for granted how blessed we truly are. Um, you know, to be around the game, to be able to teach. I, I know, you know, again, when I was growing up, we just didn't have, you know, we didn't have the three indoor facilities, the turf fields. You know, I, I can remember hitting off of a tee in my, in my garage in Northern Indiana into a mattress just so I got my swings in. Now these guys are getting 24 seven memberships and, and all that. So when I get to actually see a kid walk in our facility, take reps with his dad, his coach, um, smile, walk out high five see them in a game when I get to go and watch them or we get to watch these kids play and the successes or when they sign that college scholarship. I mean, I think that in itself is absolutely what excites me every single day to show up to show up to our facilities, show up to our games and watch our players. And I think obviously, again, I mean, we take a lot of responsibility, you know, within that with within our families, right? I mean, because, you know, we are true mentors to these individuals, both on and off the field. And so taking that and using that and then allowing our families to see kind of what we're willing to provide and be vulnerable to, um, to make sure that our families understand we're, we're, we're all in, um, is awesome to be able to, again, just the amount of friends that I've gained out of this is, is immense. Then I take that to the next level, which is coaches and people like you and Jay and all these people that you just continue to surround yourself with. If you're, you know, at the ABCA conventions and the coaching community and, the knowledge you gain. I mean, every day I'm learning something new, um, you know, uh, about what is out there, what we can do, what we can offer. So I think, I think that's the why. I mean, when I sit back and I just think about all the friendships I've gained and, and the people that I've impacted and our coaches have impacted, it's awesome. You know, if I was to change one thing, um, I think, uh, I'd have to say the cost, I mean, of travel baseball, right? I mean, it just, it's, it's asinine sometimes to me when I see, you know, an event one year cost X and it, it go up by 30%, you know, in one, one year, and there's really no difference, right? It's not like they, they did anything majorly changing to their facilities. Um, they're just increasing the price because that's what everybody else is doing, um, which ultimately then impacts us, right? Because now we have to raise our prices. We have to try to explain it to our families. You know, I can understand just normal inflation, Um, and things of that nature. I get that. Um, But, you know, as we all know, it never goes this way, right? It's always, it's always, let's see how much higher we can take it. And I think ultimately at the end of the day, I think we've, we've lost, you know, definitely several generations of kids that probably would have played this game that are now going on and playing other sports just because they can't afford it. Their parents can't afford it. They got multi kids that they can't get involved because one, they just, they can't, they can't put that financial burden on their family. And so I think if there was a way that we could really truly control the cost, it, it would help us immensely from the travel ball, um, you know, side of things. 